Hey mamas, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, thank you so much for coming. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will know when all of my videos are coming out. If you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. I hope that through each and every video that you watch from me, you feel more empowered to have the birth that you desire. My name is Chanel and I am a working mama. I share information to educate mamas to be empowered, to advocate for themselves, to have an informed and empowered pregnancy, birth, and postpartum journey. In this video, I want to talk about 10 different ways to naturally induce labor. If you're watching this video, you may be wondering how you're going to get this baby out naturally. You may be planning a natural birth, you may be planning a VBAC, you may also be planning a medicated birth, but you are hopeful that your body will go into labor naturally. In this video, I'm going to share with you a few ways, some of which I have also tried to naturally induce labor. Of course, always talk to your healthcare provider before making any decision to try to naturally induce your labor to make sure that it is going to be safe for you and baby. Number one, massage. So if you have not realized or been told by now, the most effective way for you to go into labor is to be in a relaxed state, for your body to be in a relaxed state, for your pelvic floor to be in a relaxed state, for your mind to be in a relaxed state. What better way to get into a relaxed state than get a massage? I mean, I'll tell you, <laughs> during my first pregnancy, I didn't even think about something like that because my water broke early and I didn't even think that I was going into labor that fast. But during my second pregnancy, when I got to my due date and I was still pregnant, I was so annoyed. I mean, annoyed probably isn't the best word to use. Tired, exhausted. I just wanted to meet my baby. And so my husband scheduled me to get a massage on my due date to hopefully help induce labor. I didn't end up going into labor that same day. However, what I did feel was a rush of relaxation coming onto my body because what was happening was I was on maternity leave and I was just getting tense because I was getting anxious and I was ready to meet my baby and I wasn't allowing my body or my mind to truly relax. When I got that massage, it really allowed my body to get into a relaxed state so that moving forward into that 40th week of pregnancy, my body was going to be in a little bit more of a gentle and peaceful place so that when it was ready to go, when my baby was ready to come out, that it would be in a much better space. You don't have to schedule a massage by a masseuse or any professional. You, your partner, your friend can do it for you at home. Making sure that you're taking care of your body and keeping it in a relaxed state is very, very important. Number two, acupressure. If you've never heard of acupressure, it is so powerful. There are certain parts of your body that you can apply pressure to that will signal different triggers to your brain and to your body to do certain things. With all of these tips that I'm giving you, there's no guarantee that you're going to go into labor within 24 hours. However, it will start to signal to your brain and to your body and possibly your baby if he or she is ready to come into the world that we're ready to meet you and that my body is ready to get prepared for labor. So if you look up online different acupressure points to induce labor, one of which is on your hand, another of which is on your ankle, some on your feet as well, that you can apply pressure to that will send signals to allow your uterus to start contracting. And that will, again, help your body go into labor. Acupressure is a very simple tool that you can use before you go into labor as well as in labor so that your labor can continue to progress and your contractions can remain consistent. Number three, acupuncture. You've probably seen it on a movie. In my mind, the best picture that comes back to my mind is Nutty Professor and having all those little needles all over his body. Acupuncture is not something that you can do by yourself at home. You can make an appointment to get acupressure done in order for your body to be naturally induced or put your body in a state to be induced. Acupuncture are different parts of our bodies that if we apply pressure to different points, again, it will signal to our body to go into labor or to get prepared to go into labor. So if you're looking at something that is going to be a little bit more invasive, but still natural, that acupuncture is a very healthy way 
to induce labor. Now again, does not mean that once you leave your appointment, you're going to go into labor. But what it does do is it helps your body gear up and warm up for labor. Number four, spicy food. Now, I know you're probably thinking, Chanel, I, I don't like spicy food. And that's okay. What I will say about spicy food is that this is not an evidence-based approach, okay? Spicy food is one of those old wives' tales, something that does work for some people, some people Feel like it doesn't work for them because maybe they eat spicy food often either way it goes this is an old wives tale and it kind of worked for me in my first labor so i wanted to share it with you guys spicy food what it can do is it can kind of trigger things in your uterus to get your uterus to begin contracting or some people will say it kind of wakes baby up and gets baby moving around because of the spiciness of the food now again, there's no research behind this, so I don't want you all to be running to your local restaurant to get the spiciest thing or drenching your food in hot sauce. What I am saying is it's not going to hurt you to try it if you're trying to induce labor. To give you guys an idea of how this worked for me, I, when I was 37 weeks and four days pregnant, I was what I felt at my wit's end. I felt like I could not get any bigger. I felt like I was waddling all over the place and there was no way that I was going to make it two more weeks. But I happened to go out to lunch with some of my coworkers that day and we went to a Latin restaurant and I just thought to myself, let me just eat something really spicy because I don't know if I really wanna be pregnant another two weeks. I didn't think it was gonna be effective, but I just thought that I would try. So I asked the people, what is the spiciest thing that you have on this menu? And so they brought it out to me as my meal. I ate it and it was great. I had a good meal. Nothing really concerned me. Then when I went home, then when I got back to the office, a couple of hours later, my water broke and I was in labor. Now, I'm not going to say it was because of the spicy food because I also walked five miles the day before. But I will say that maybe the old wife still had some bit of truth in it. So in my second pregnancy, I was getting close to my due date and I decided to try some spicy food again. I went to a Mexican restaurant with my mom and I asked them for the spiciest thing on the menu. And I don't know if it was because maybe I had been eating more spicy food this second time around, but whatever they gave me was not that spicy. And so I just tried to find whatever spicy food I could find in my house at another restaurant and it didn't do anything. So I will say again, this is not a research-based thing. It is very much so a old wives tale that can work or does work for some people and may not work for others. Or it may work for your first pregnancy and not work for your second pregnancy, like in my case. But I just wanted to share that with you guys because it's a very easy, natural, and safe way to try to induce labor at home. Number five, red raspberry leaf tea. If you've never heard of red raspberry leaf tea, which I did before my second pregnancy, it is actually a very powerful tea. Now there are some companies that do make it for mamas that you can just go buy off the shelf at a Walmart or a Target, or you can actually get a red raspberry leaf extract that you would just kind of drop in your water. The purpose of the red raspberry leaf tea is to get your uterus to begin contracting and you can almost feel it happen immediately. The research that is out there is very small and so the, the research again is too small to come to any sort of conclusive evidence that res red raspberry leaf tea actually helps induce labor or it doesn't help induce labor. However, there are a lot of mamas that swear by it, me included. I use red raspberry leaf tea starting in about my mm, 37th or 38th week. Uh, again, because it's not meant to put you into labor tomorrow, but it is meant to get your uterus to begin contracting so that when you do go into labor, true labor, your uterus has already begun practicing those contractions. What I would do is I would have a couple of cups of red raspberry leaf tea a day, and what I could feel, whether it was the tea or even the extract, the extract is a lot stronger, so you do, again, need to talk to your healthcare provider about 
what they may be comfortable with for your body. However, each of those, I began to feel my uterus contracting. And so that was like practicing my uterus tightening and loosening, tightening and loosening. So red raspberry leaf tea, try it. It is great. Even if it doesn't put you into labor immediately, it does help your uterus begin contracting naturally on its own, which is what we want. We don't want to have our uterus begin contracting because of any sort of synthetic um, medicine or synthetic oxytocin because it does make a huge difference in our labor experience. Number six, evening primrose oil or barrage oil. Evening primrose oil and barrage oil are different supplements that you can use and the purpose of them is to essentially soften or ripen your cervix. So if you've ever seen a picture of your cervix or you understand the process of dilation, Dilation happens when our cervix begins to thin and widen. And that's where that dilation comes from. The research has shown women who use evening primrose oil did have a more ripened cervix. It did not contribute to how fast they went into labor or how quick their labor was, but they did show a more favorable cervix for that dilation process. And so if you're interested in trying to soften your cervix, which again, we want to do because we want that area to be as soft and as ripened as possible so it can just spread and open for our baby to come down and out. Evening primrose oil is a really great way to naturally induce labor and you can begin that most times sooner than when your due date is. Number seven, walking or exercise. This is probably one of the most natural easy ways to induce labor. If you have not been walking already, mama, you need to start now. If you're watching this video, whether you're 36 weeks, whether you're 40 weeks, whether you're 41 weeks, whether you're 24 weeks, you need to start walking. The reason that exercise and walking is so important in pregnancy is because we want our pelvis to be moving. We need it to be moving so that our baby has room to move down and out. If we're stiff, if we're sitting down all the time, we are having a very closed pelvis. We're having a very closed area for our baby and that doesn't give them much opportunity to move down. But if we're moving, we're making room at the same time for our baby to move down. So how does that contribute to naturally inducing labor? Well, if we're walking and we're moving baby down and into position, baby may naturally feel ready to come down and out. So the more exercising you can do, the more squats you can do, the more lunges you can do, the more walking you can do, you may be able to walk yourself into labor. Honestly, I'm telling you, like I told you before in my first pregnancy, I walked five miles the day before I went into labor. I didn't expect for it to happen that fast, but I had a mission which was Operation Walk This Baby Out. And Operation Walk This Baby Out ended up being successful. Again, I'm not saying you have to walk five miles, but you can walk all day long. And not only could it induce labor, but it's good for you. And it gives you cardiovascular health, which we need in labor because we need stamina and endurance. Because it can be long and it can be draining and it can be exhausting. And so we need to have as much cardiovascular health as possible. If you've done a lot of walking and you just want to take it up a notch, you can do up to 300 squats a day. And I know people who I've told are like, Chanel, I don't even do 300 squats when I'm not pregnant. I'm not saying you have to do 300 squats. I'm saying you can, if you want to, do 300 squats, air squats, body weight squats a day. When I got closer to my due date the second time around, I was knocking out 200 squats a day. Why? Because I wanted to, one, make room for my baby because squatting opens your pelvis and relaxes your pelvic floor. And so not only am I working out, getting my cardiovascular health in place, but I'm also making room for my baby to move down, push onto my cervix, hopefully begin those uterine contractions and put myself into labor. It sounds like a lot, but you could easily break them up into sets of 10, sets of 25, sets of 50 while you're watching TV. It's as simple as that. So mama, if you are trying to do the most natural thing, walk, exercise, squat, lunge, your baby out. Number eight, eating dates. 
Now, if you've never tried a date before, you're probably like, mm, I don't even know what that is. If you have tried a date before and you didn't like it, you're probably like, nah, I'm good. I don't even like those. I don't know where they come from. But mama, let me tell you. One, there's a lot of dates on the market now that are a lot more flavorful and actually taste good. But dates are actually known to soften and ripen the cervix. Like we talked about earlier with primrose oil, we want our cervix to be softened and ripened so that it can open up and make room for baby to move along into the birth canal and out of our bodies, AKA dilation. One of the ways for us to be proactive in helping our cervix ripen and soften is to do a few things, one of which can be eating dates. Research has shown that mamas who ate about seven dates a day had more of a ripened cervix in labor. I was downing dates like crazy. I actually like them, so maybe that was a part of it, but it really did help because I was trying to soften that thing all the way out. So having a softened and ripened cervix, which you can do through eating primrose oil like we talked about earlier, or even having dates can really help that process. Look up the research on evidence-based birth um, on all of these things. You can see, again, the research is still very small, so there's not a ton out there right now because these are much more natural ways of induction. And in our society, that's just not common. We tend to see more medically induced labors. And so there's not as much research on some of these things. However, there is enough research to show that for some women, eating dates was much more favorable for their cervix. Number nine, nipple stimulation. Now, I know you're probably like, whoa, this got real explicit and graphic real fast, but mama, nipple stimulation is one of the easiest ways for you to induce labor. It's very natural, it is very safe, and it is very effective, really, if you do it in the right way. Nipple stimulation, what it can do is release oxytocin. What nipple stimulation can do is do all of those things. If you're thinking about intimacy, if you're thinking about oxytocin, the love hormone, having nipple stimulation as a part of that process can really help not only begin labor and start that contraction of your uterus, but can also help intensify the contractions, which is what we want so that baby can move down and out. Nipple stimulation can be done by you. It can be done by your partner if you want to get them involved. It can be done while you're at home, while you're in labor, after labor has already started, as you're getting closer to the end. All of those things can help support labor. So nipple stimulation is a very, very natural way to help induce labor. If you have not seen the benefits of it, I would highly suggest you look those up and begin trying that when you're getting close to your due date. Last but not least, number 10, sex. Sex, 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 sex. That's how you got this baby. That's how you're gonna get it out too. Sex can be so beneficial in helping induce labor. One, because it releases oxytocin like we talked about before, which is the love hormone, which is what we need in labor to keep contractions going, to keep our uterus contracting, to keep labor progressing. But sex can also help soften your cervix and ripen your cervix. A man's sperm is the only natural prostaglandin that exists. So if sperm meets your cervix, that is a very natural and easy way to soften and ripen your cervix. So mama, if you are in the mood, even if you're not, having sperm touch your cervix can also help soften and ripen your cervix to get ready for uterine contractions. Not only that, when you have an orgasm, that orgasm is actually a mini contraction and so that will also help get contractions started and can help you induce labor naturally. So I hope all 10 of these tips were helpful for you. Again, be sure to talk to your healthcare provider about all of the things that you hope to try or even test out before you do to make sure that they're safe for you and baby. If you've tried other things that I didn't mention, please leave them in the comments below so that we can continue to share education and resources and tips for mamas everywhere who are trying to get their babies out. I hope that these videos are helpful for you. Education leads to advocacy, which can lead to an informed and empowered birth. See you on the next video.